Hello everyone, I am back and let me update you on what I'm working on now. So previously I had done the center section of this mold. Uh, here is the original mold. I use the term mold loosely because it's not thick enough to be a mold. But what it is, there's the part underneath here, there's gel coat, actually the part, PVA, gel coat, and a layer of fiberglass mat. Now that's not strong enough to be a mold when I separate it from the actual part. It's not going to have enough strength to be a mold. So what I needed to do was add some support. Well, there were several ways to do that. I could keep on adding more fiberglass till I got it to a sufficient thickness, but then it would probably need some uh, like steel rods or something like that. So you can see these other molds, that's what they did. They created the part and then they added the steel rods uh, basically, it's probably conduit. And then covered it with fiberglass. And this structurally holds everything in place. Fiberglass is not the greatest thing structurally. So I could have done that, but what I had was an old mold that was bad. Uh, I painted the part, waxed it heavily, and it paint had cured for, I don't know, a week or two. Out in the sun in 100 degrees, I assumed it was completely cured. Come to find out, it wasn't. And what happened is there was a horrible reaction between the uh, gel coat and the paint. And the two of them basically bonded to each other. So we had to forcefully take them apart. And uh, the, some, of the <laughs> some of the paint came off, paint and primer came off of the part. And a lot of the gel coat stayed here. Some of the gel coat stuck on the part. Uh, it was a mess. Obviously the part was easy to clean up. Well, relative, we just had to sand off all the paint and primer. That's what's under here. So this was pretty much in bad shape. So I sanded it down and you can see that even after sanding it down, it's still not very smooth. So I could have spent time fixing this to make a mold out of it. But instead I decided, you know what? Why don't I use this as a backing for what I have already? So that's what I decided to do. To do that, because it is the exact same size as the part, then obviously it wouldn't fit over this because it's a slightly different size by the thickness of the gel coat and the fiberglass. So what I did was I cut it into sections, said, okay, I've got to make room to have that uh, extra space there. So that's what I did last time was I did this center section across here, all across here. Then I ran out of time. So I stopped, left it overnight. Now I'm going to do the end pieces. So what I did was, again, here's the piece here that goes like that. Kind of like a puzzle. This piece goes here, like so. All right. And of course there's the kerf where the cutter went. There will always be a gap there no matter what. All right. No big deal for this. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fiberglass resin on top of here. And then I have these pieces cut to fill in these blanks. Let's see, I have to get oriented correctly. There we go. Ah. All right, so that piece goes right there. And then this will go on top of that. And that will bond those two together. Then I have this piece over here. I'll call it a cap. This cap goes over here. Over here, there we go. And then I have the fiberglass here. There's the notch. So it's going to go like so. Hard to do one-handed, but you get the idea. Now, I realized afterwards I kind of screwed up. Um, I should have left this as one piece because it's very hard to get this thing to stay in place. What I'm going to have to do is put the resin right there and kind of use it as glue. I'm actually going to resin this whole area. Use this as glue and line this as best as I can with that line, but I shouldn't have done that. Of course, after I did it, I realized that wasn't the best option. So over here, I marked it where the pieces meet, but I did not cut it. So now... If I can find that piece, it's around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. 
All right, so this goes right here like that. And the lines are going to help me. So I'll put this on there and I will use the resin to essentially glue this uh, here. And then that'll go on. And then this piece goes over here. But see now the nice thing is I can put resin over this whole area right here. And then when I put this on and it gets wet, it will literally just lay right onto there. I can put this on there like so, but I won't. What I'll do first, of course, is do this one. Let me figure out my puzzle here. This one will go right here. And then this will go right here, like so. And I'll take some clamps and clamp this. That sticks up only because it's not wet. Once it wets down, that won't stick up anymore. But you can see that all that's left when I squeeze that is the width of the kerf line, the cutter. And this is the cutter that I used. So it's very narrow. Okay, so that's what I'm getting ready to do. You lay everything out. So again, what I'm going to do is put resin down on here, coat it really well, put this in place, put resin on it, get it soaked very well. Once I do that, I'm going to put resin on this piece, put it in place, and then put resin on this, put it in place, and then I'm going to use my clamps to hold everything together. All right. So I will switch to the time-lapse video to do this because I'm sure you don't want to watch me literally do this. Uh, that's all I can think of. Da, 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 da. All right. And part of the reason I broke this up was because I don't know exactly how much resin to mix up for this. I guessed at it. I think I guessed a cup of resin for that whole area right there. And it was pretty close. Um, I guessed a cup to finish this because this and that added together is probably half of those. But it's just a guess. So I got everything ready. I have a cup here and then I have the uh, MEKP to add to it. And then I use a little eyedropper to add the MEKP to that. And then a paintbrush to brush it on a little chip brush right here. All right, so I've got this down to a system. It, it's funny, when I first started this, it was a little bit intimidating. Now I've done it so much, it's like I can almost do it in my sleep. The other thing that's neat is, since I've been working with carbon fiber so much, coming back and doing uh, fiberglass with fiberglass mat is really a piece of cake. It's nothing to me anymore. All right, oh, and I did scuff up all the surfaces with 60 grit sandpaper, so everything should stick very well. All right. That's all I got. Like, subscribe, hit the alert, hit the things if you want to donate. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't know Jack. Bye.